in the previous videos, we saw about reversible processes and irreversibilities and internal irreversible processes. Um, we will tie this in to what we looked at before we started looking at reversible processes that is heat engines and refrigerators or heat pumps that work in cycles. So, assume that we have a cycle that is consisting of a set of processes, right? A cycle is a set of processes that start at a particular state and undergo many state uh, transitions and come back to the same state, right? So, that is what is a cycle. So, assume that all the processes that occur in that cycle are irreversible, right? And that is when we get maximum net work from that cycle, right? Because we waste minimum amount of work, right? So, why? Because we are trying to maximize work that we obtain from a system. What is the wo work that we obtain from a system? It is the network. What is the network? It is the work done by the uh, working fluid when it expands or when it does work on a shaft minus the work done on the working fluid while it uh, goes through a pump or a compressor or a piston that is compressed. So, that is what is the network, right? And when we want to maximize the network, what we want to do is maximize the work done by the working fluid and minimize the work done on the working fluid. In both situations, we want the processes to be reversible. And that is why we, we look at as, um, cycles or we look at uh, cycles that are reversible. And, and the best known reversible cycle is called the Carnot cycle. And this is named after a French engineer called Sadi Carnot, who invented or who uh, proposed this cycle in 1824. Remember that France and England were fighting these wars and the idea was to get maximum work output for minimum heat input uh, by burning coal or whatever other source of heat was available, right? So, uh, Carnot proposed this idea of a reversible cycle that consisted of four steps. And then we are going to look at why this Carnot cycle is so important and how all reversible cycles will then have the same efficiency as the Carnot cycle or in other words, Carnot reversible cycle will have the same efficiency as any other reversible cycle between the same two temperatures and we will look at that in the next video. But in this video, we are going to look at the Carnot cycle in some detail, right? So, imagine uh, that, um, so we have the Carnot cycle. So, imagine that we have gas trapped in a cylinder piston arrangement, right? And uh, while it is not possible to have reversible processes, we will assume that the processes within uh, the system are reversible. In other words, these are internally reversible processes and because they are occurring in a cycle, it is called a internally reversible cycle, right? So, or in other words, a reversible cycle, right? So, uh, assume that this uh, cylinder is brought in contact with a high temperature reservoir at a temperature Th. So, there is heat transfer from the high temperature reservoir to the gas, but the, high, the heat transfer is at constant temperature. So, how do we mean, how can we have heat transfer at constant temperature? It is a concept that uh, basically if you have heat transfer very, very, very slowly, then it becomes uh, then it can be done at zero temperature gradient, right? So, how do we do that? So, let us say that this gas pushes this piston out, does work on the surroundings, right? When it does work on the surroundings, uh, it cools down. And let us say that before it cools down by any appreciable amount, there is heat added from the reservoir to the gas to compensate for that cooling down and that it actually never cools down. In other words, the uh, rate of heat addition and the rate of cooling down due to doing external work, they are exactly uh, corresponding to each other and the gas temperature never changes. And also, in other words, the gas temperature is always the temperature of the high temperature reservoir, right? And what is this? So, what is this process? This process is an isothermal expansion. In other words, I am adding heat to a system without increasing its temperature, right? And, and again, uh, this is an idealized process, never happens, right? But it is useful to study it, right? Now, at the end of this uh, process in which heat is added to the system at constant temperature, what is that temperature? 
temperature is Th. Then uh, suddenly uh, the contact with the thermal reservoir is removed and uh, the entire system is made adiabatic. right which means no heat can cross the boundaries of that system right and then it is allowed to expand a little more and when it does that both its temperature and its pressure drop obviously because it is an adiabatic expansion there is no incoming energy and so therefore the pressure and temperature both drop. So uh, we have an adiabatic expansion. So after this adiabatic expansion, um, once again the system is brought into contact with a thermal energy reservoir right? and that thermal energy reservoir is at a lower temperature Tl right? and uh, there is an external force that is now compressing the gas. So the expansion is now done and the piston has gone to its maximum position and now there is an external force that is pushing the piston back and therefore compressing the gas. And while it is compressing obviously it will tend to heat up right but the moment it heats up by a small temperature difference dt there is heat transferred from the system to this low temperature reservoir at tl and so uh, the temperature never increases beyond tl right and what is this tl tl is the temperature at the end of the adiabatic expansion process and it is also the temperature during this third process which is the isothermal compression. Right. So what am I doing? I am compressing the gas just like I had an isothermal expansion in which the gas was expanding and it was not allowed to cool down because there was a compensating amount of heat that is being added from a high temperature reservoir Th uh, so that the gas temperature always remained at Th. Right. And here I have an adiabatic expansion. Here we have an isothermal compression which is kind of the reverse process of here but then except that the temperature is now different the temperature is now Tl instead of Th and the temperature is never allowed to rise beyond Tl because whenever the temperature tends to rise energy is removed to the low temperature reservoir and so the temperature of this gas is always equal to the sink temperature which is at Tl whereas in this process the temperature of the gas is always equal to the source temperature which is at Th. Right. Finally, the fourth process is uh, a reverse of the adiabatic expansion and uh, we have the same external force now compressing the piston back to its initial, initial condition and uh, again the system here is held at adiabatic conditions, right? which means now there is no heat transfer in the fourth process and then uh, this is an adiabatic compression. So if I can plot this on a PV diagram, then um, the isothermal expansion looks like this. Um, this is 1, 2, then we have the adiabatic expansion, it's come to 3. Um, And then uh, we have a um, isothermal compression which brings us to 4 and then a adiabatic compression which brings us back to 1 and all of these are reversible processes. right? So this is a reversible isothermal compression uh, expansion this is a reversible adiabatic expansion this one is a reversible isothermal compression and this process here is a reversible adiabatic 
compression right and so this is what is called a carno cycle A Carnot cycle is a theoretical cycle because um, it is very difficult to add heat to a system or at, uh, especially a gas whose temperature is not changing. Uh, you can add heat to a system that is uh, undergoing a phase change without a temperature difference, but it is very difficult to do that to a gas, right. And so, um, <clears throat> also uh, very difficult to have reversible compression and reversible expansion because there is a piston here and that piston is always going to have some of the other friction uh, with the cylinder again. So, uh, it is it's an idealized process and all of the processes that occur, the reversible isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, isothermal compression and adiabatic compression are all reversible processes and so therefore, the Carnot cycle itself is a reversible cycle, right. And why do we study this? Because this was the first reversible cycle that was proposed. And it turns out that it has the maximum possible efficiency of any device that operates between temperatures Th and Tl. And that is what we are going to see in the future videos, but this is why we study it, right. And uh, uh, we can also have this cycle in reverse. So, instead of going from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 1, we can also go from 1 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2 and 2 to 1, right. So, we can follow this cycle in the uh, anti clockwise direction and when we do that we get a reversible a reversed carnot cycle or we get basically a carnot refrigeration cycle right so if we have a heat engine uh, running on a carnot cycle uh, then we have this cycle if we have a refrigerator or a heat pump running on a carnot cycle we have the same cycle but it runs counter clockwise direction